May I have your attention, please? Would everyone please take their seats? We're ready to start the processional. Good morning, brethren, ladies, and guests. The Grand Master has asked that if anyone has a cell phone with them today, would they please turn it off or place it on vibrate during the meeting so they do not interrupt our proceedings. Thank you.
By the authority in me vested as the right worshipful Grand Master, I hereby authorize an open communication and declare the annual Grand Communication of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania be now open for the dispatch of business. Brother A. Robert Cook, Grand Chaplain, give the opening prayer. Let us pray. Most holy and glorious Lord God, thou great architect of heaven and earth, who art the giver of all good gifts and graces and has promised that where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. In thy name we assemble and meet together, most humbly beseeching thee to bless us in all our undertakings, that we may know and serve thee aright, and that all our doings may tend to thy glory. Amen. Promote it be. No man is an island. No man stands alone. Each man's joy is joy to me. Each man's grief. Brethren, ladies and guests, the flag ceremony. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. O eternal God, through whose mighty power our fathers won their liberties of old, grant we beseech thee that we and all the people of the land may with loyalty, fidelity, and courage maintain these liberties protect and assist all who are serving their country at home or abroad, by land, by sea, or in the air, that they, being armed with thy defense, may do their duty to thy honor and glory. Amen. So Amen. mote it be. Amen. Oh. 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, and thank you for your attendance here today. It's a great day in Freemasonry in Pennsylvania, as you see the passing of the torch to a, another, no, I shouldn't say another, that makes, that implies that perhaps I was good, to a good grandmaster who's going to be leading this fraternity next two years. Brother Grand Marshal. It is time for the official reception of our distinguished guests. You will present them at this time. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Ronald C. Mitchum, Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Freemasons of South Carolina. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother James W. Galloway, Sr., Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge Thank of you. Ancient Thank Free and Paris. Accepted Masons in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here to represent the Free Masons. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother William Sardone, Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the State of New York. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Gregory Scott, Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Society of free and accepted Masons in the state of New Jersey. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Richard Nagel, Most Worshipful Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of Maryland. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Stephen Petrie, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master of the Most Grand Lodge, or of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of Connecticut. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you David Collins, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient and Honorable Fraternity, Free and Accepted Masons of the State of New Hampshire. Right Worshipful Grand Master, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Robert Elliston, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of the Most Ancient and Honorable Society of Free and Accepted Masons 
in the state of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Evan Moody, Most Worshipful Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient Free Accepted Masons in Delaware, and Brother Glenn F. Davis Sr., Right Worshipful Grand Secretary and Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to to you, Brother Stephen M. Grindle, Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in the State of Ohio, and Brother Michael Watson, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary and Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Anas Kamara, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of the District of Columbia. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother L. Aubrey Humphrey, Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons in Wisconsin. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Lewis Youngblood, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden of the Most Worshipful Grand Lodge of Ancient, Free, and Accepted Masons of the State of West Virginia. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother Melvin A. Alston Sr., Most Worshipful Grandmaster of the Most Worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, and Brother Joseph B. Jefferson, Right Worshipful Past Grand Secretary and Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster, and Brother Leonard A. Hurd, Most Worshipful Past Grandmaster and Party. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother David Cameron, Most Worshipful Grandmaster of the Grand Lodge of Ancient Free Accepted Masons of Canada in the Providence of Ontario. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Companion Robert J. Burns, most excellent Grand High Priest of the Grand Holy Royal Arch Chapter of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you illustrious companion William D. Oakes, Most Puissant Grandmaster of the Grand Council of Royal and Select Master Masons of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Sir Knight Richard F. Muth, Right Eminent Grand Commander of the Grand Commandery of Knights Templar of Pennsylvania, and Sir Knight Douglas M. Rowe, Eminent Grand Recorder. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you illustrious Robert J. Bateman, 33rd degree, Deputy and active member for Pennsylvania of the Supreme Council of Sovereign Grand Inspectors General of the 33rd and last degree of the ancient accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry for the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction of the United States of America and our Right Worshipful Past Grand Master. The illustrious Thomas K. Sturgeon, 33rd degree, Grand Chancellor, active emeritus, member for Pennsylvania, and Right Worshipful Past Grandmaster. The illustrious George Nenechekny, 33rd degree, active member for Pennsylvania. Close. <laughs> the illustrious Keith E. Parkinson, 33rd degree, active member for Pennsylvania. The illustrious Paul J. Roop, 33rd degree, 
active member for Pennsylvania. The illustrious Thomas R. Labaugh, 33rd degree, active member for Pennsylvania. The illustrious C. DeForest Trexler, 33rd degree, active emeritus member for Pennsylvania. Illustrious Russell W. Baker, 33rd degree, active emeritus member for Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Knight Companion John A. Abel, Intendant General Division of Pennsylvania Western of the United Grand Imperial Council of the Knights of the Red Cross of Constantine and Dependent Orders for the United States of America, Mexico, and the Philippines, and Knight Companion Henry Lesher, Intendant General Division of Pennsylvania Central. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother George D. Sagers, Executive Director of the George Washington Masonic Memorial. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you William L. Kingsbury, Chief Executive Officer of the Masonic Villages of Pennsylvania. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Rodney E. Boyce, past District Deputy Grandmaster, Executive Officer of Pennsylvania DMLA of the International Order of DMLA, and Brother B. Tyler Moore, State Master Counselor, Pennsylvania DMLA, and Paul E. Mosberg, Executive Officer, New Jersey DMLA. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Brother S. Alexander Fizz, Executive Director. <laughs> nah, I got you this time. <laughs> Executive Director of Pennsylvania Masonic Youth Foundation. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Helen B. Snedden, Supreme Inspector, Pennsylvania Rainbow of the International Order of Rainbow Girls, and Calista Cavanaugh, Grand Worthy Advisor. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Deborah Jones Thomas, Grand Guardian of the International Order of Job's Daughters. and Corey Baker, Grand Bethel Honor Queen. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Orphelia G. Kemmler, Worthy Grand Matron of the International Order of Eastern Star, Grand Chapter of Pennsylvania, and Brother George M. Camlin, Worthy Grand Patron, and Virginia L. Powell, Plyler, Grand Secretary, past Grand Matron. We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. Oh. Mm Brethren, ladies and guests, please stand and give a round of applause for our distinguished guests. It's always a pleasure to be able to greet our distinguished guests and and uh, sort of reflect upon all that they do for Freemasonry as well. So we're pleased to have them, and I appreciate your recognition of them. The annual reports of the most Grand Lodge, uh, most Grand Lodge committees were presented at the quarterly communication held Wednesday, December the 4th, 2019 last. As there are additional reports requiring Grand Lodge action, I will call for them at this time. The Committee on Fraternal Recognition. Brother Grand Secretary. I work for Grand Master.
Ambassador M. Brevin. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has received a request for recognition from the regular Grand Lodge of Italy. This Grand Lodge was established on April the 17th, 1993 by the National Grand Lodge of France. It was the result of a past Grand Master of the recognized Grand Orient of Italy for mending a breakaway and according to our information, when he could not be reelected for life, the Grand Orient of Italy was consecrated in 1805 and has functioned as the regular and recognized Grand Lodge in Italy for most of the Masonic history. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania recognizes the Grand Orient of Italy in accordance with Masonic protocol. Two Grand Lodges may be recognized in the same jurisdiction only if they recognize each other or agree to share territory. This has not taken place in Italy. Your Committee on Fraternal Recognition recommends that fraternal recognition not be granted to the regular Grand Lodge of Italy. The Right Worshipful Grand Master and Brethren, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has received a request for recognition from the Grand Orient of Polista. This Grand Lodge is an independent Grand Orient in Brazil and the Grand Lodge operating in the same geographical jurisdiction as the Grand Lodge of Sao Paulo has agreed to share territory and grant recognition. They have been accepted as full members of the Inter-American Confederation, the CMI. They have submitted requisite requirements of proof of regularity and statements of principles. Your Committee on Fraternal Recognition recommends that fraternal recognition be granted to the Grand Orient of Polista. Right Worshipful Grand Master and Brethren, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has received a request for recognition from the Grand Orient of Rio de Janeiro. The Grand Lodge is an independent Grand Orient in Brazil that the Grand Lodge operating under the same geographical jurisdiction. The Grand Lodge of Rio de Janeiro has agreed to share territory and grant recognition. They have accepted as full members of the CMI. They have submitted requisite requirements, proof of regularity, statements of principles. Your Committee on Fraternal Recognition recommends that fraternal recognition be granted to the Grand Orient of Rio de Janeiro. Right Worshipful Grand Master and Brethren, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has received a request for recognition from the Grand Lodge of the State of Chihuahua of Mexico. We have, we have deferred action until we receive their statement of principles and proof of regularity. Right Worshipful Grand Master, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has received a request from for recognition from the Grand Lodge of Sinola, Mexico. We have deferred action until we receive their statement of principles and proof of rig 27, 2020 to be drawn in the usual manner. Be it resolved that the sum of $40,000 be appropriated to the stewards of the Stephen Gerard Charity Fund for the year ending tw December 27, 2020 to be drawn in the usual manner. Be it resolved that the sum of $10,000 be appropriated to the bursars of the Thomas R. Patton Charity Fund for the year ending December 27, 2020 to be drawn in the usual manner. Right Worshipful Grand Master, I move the adoption of these resolutions. Right Worshipful Grand Master, I second the motion. Brethren, you've heard the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, so ordered Brother Grand Secretary. Brother Grand Marshal. Conduct Brother George D. Sagers, Executive Director of the George Washington Masonic Memorial to the East to make a presentation. Grand Master, Deputy Grand Master, Grand Wardens, my brethren, I bring you warm fraternal greetings from the George Washington Masonic National Memorial Association. The memorial stands on the highest hill in Alexandria, Virginia, just across the Potomac River from our nation's capital. The memorial was conceived, constructed, is maintained and operated by the Freemasons of the United States. 
We have a strong connection with Pennsylvania. In 1910, when the Memorial Foundation was established, the chairman of our advisory committee was John Wanamaker, a somewhat prominent Pennsylvanian. Our second president was Lewis Waters, who served from 1917 to 1938. It was under his guidance and direction that the funding was established and the memorial was constructed. So we have strong bonds with Pennsylvania. In the recent past, we had our brother Scott Stoner served on our board and as our president. And today we have the honor and privilege of having Tom Sturgeon serving as one of our vice presidents. So we, uh, we appreciate the support of Pennsylvania and our connection. And Grandmaster, if you would join me, please. Grandmaster, it is my pleasure to present the certificate of appreciation to Right Worshipful Brother S. Eugene Herrett, Grandmaster, the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of free and accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, with sincere appreciation for your interest in and support of the George Washington Masonic National Memorial. Thank Eugene, you, sir. It's my great pleasure, sir. George, I appreciate that very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You go back down there. All right, thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to ask you to do this piece of grace. Thank you. Thank you again, Brother George. We appreciate it very much. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct Brother Ronald A. Young Sr., Right Worshipful Past Grand Master to the East to make a presentation on behalf of the National Masonic Foundation for Children and the Masonic Service Association of North America. So and he's already up here, so you get a chance to sit down for a minute. you the uh, certificate of appreciation is presented to you as Eugene Herrick, Grand Master of Pennsylvania. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to work together in unity. Given in sincere appreciation for your ab abiding interest in strong support of the Masonic Service Association program, giving time to our national hospital visit program and for encouraging MSA representatives, deputies, and volunteers of Pennsylvania. With this certificate go our best wishes to, for continued success and service to our gentle craft. And it is signed by Stuart Arneson, past Grand Master, and Craig Davis, Administrator for MSA. Thank you, Ron. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Ron, I, I noticed as you were reading this that uh, you, you stumbled a bit. As we age, you're seeing those bifocals come into play. We, we should probably look at a larger font. Now That's I'm what I've done personally. <laughs> well, if you want me to, I'll get it re No, no, we're going to live with this. Thank you so much. Well, now you notice. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm a member of the uh, National Foundation for Children, and you notice this certificate is in large print. <laughs> National Masonic Foundation for Children's Certificate of Appreciation is hereby presented to you, Grand Master S. Eugene Herrick, Right Worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania, <clears throat> for making a positive difference in the children's lives by supporting the National Masonic Foundation for Children and the Student Assistance Program awarded this 26th day of December 2019. Okay. I think it's the 27th day. Again, the bifocal thing. It's, no, it's no, it's no, actually it's <laughs> Okay. And it's signed by uh, Thomas Velvin, uh, our executive director. Okay. And my sincere appreciation to you and your the support. Okay. Thank and Grandmaster, the last thing I have, <clears throat> and you'll notice that it's dated November. Okay. But it was one of those things that does come with age, forgetting something. Got that already. So, <laughs> so anyhow, this is uh, from our uh, Central Pennsylvania Golf uh, Program. Okay. And uh, I know that you're using it for the 
digitalization. Well, that's a tough word. Digital yeah, you came, you came real close. It yeah. took me two years to pronounce that. <laughs> well, good luck and, and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ron. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Okay. Go ahead. He's got you. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct Brother Stephen Shimp, White Worshipful Master of St. John's Lodge, number 435 to the east for a presentation. If he showed up. Oh, here he comes. Okay. <laughs> the once that uh, a lodge gets to celebrate 150 years anniversary, 150th anniversary. So Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the officers and members of St. John's Lodge, I'd like to present you with a photo book commemorating this moment, okay. which uh, you and Lady Sally attended with us, mm -hmm. and uh, I believe we had a great time. I know so we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also have uh, one for our Deputy Grand Master and our Grand Secretary. Well, it's, it's mine that I'm Well, I'm going to give in. these to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you'll give that to the Grand Secretary, I will, pa I will pass the other one along to the Deputy Grand Master as I go. Thank Pat. you, Robert. Thank you, Brother Steve. You got his? Okay, if you would take that as well, please. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm being reminded by the uh, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master that I have a limited time in this office. <laughs> And, and it, he's going to take retribution if, if I get too snotty up here, so we'll, we'll do that. Okay. It's at this point that an outgoing Grand Master offers his farewell address. And at our December quarterly, I spoke of what I felt were significant achievements at your Grand Lodge with the help of dedicated District Deputy Grand Masters and interested members with the support of Grand Lodge officers accomplished over the last two years. I won't repeat that today because it is now history. And in a few moments, your new Grandmaster, Brother Tom Gammon IV, will talk to you of his plans to take our fraternity forward. I would be remiss, however, if I did not take this opportunity to collectively thank all of you who have made this journey over the last few years such a memorable experience for Sally and I. I'm hopeful that this has been a positive experience for Freemasonry in Pennsylvania and beyond. Two separate bits of wisdom were offered to me as I became Grand Master. Both were prophetic. One was that my term would be over in the blink of an eye, and it was. The second was especially good guidance, not only for me during my term, but I think for all of us as we progress through life. Do what you think is right. And having done that, it has made this trip into Masonic history something that has brought, my, brought pride to my heart. And what I thought was right was to include those who will succeed me in a strategic planning process that would allow all of your Grand Lodge officers to review our administrative history and to plan for the future. And with their input and advice, we were able to avoid fiscal and fraternal mistakes that could have made this administration ineffective from the outset. Together, as a team, your outgoing Grand Lodge officers have done much to change the culture of how the Grand Lodge operates We've become more fiscally responsible with both our budgets and our actual spending. The Grand Lodge officers were consulted and their advice sought on all substantive issues. And while it is the Grand Master who makes the final decision, it was helpful to have their input as I considered a particular course of action. I will repeat only one statement from my quarterly address. We, together, have tried to be good stewards of both your treasure and your trust. 
I believe we have done that, and you have elected and will install today Grand Lodge officers who will continue that culture into the foreseeable future and keep Pennsylvania not only the largest but also one of the strongest jurisdictions in the world. You have much to be proud of in your affiliation with Pennsylvania Freemasonry. You have opportunities to better your lodges and to grow as an individual as a result of your membership. And while I would like to believe that I've had some part in that, I know in my heart it is each individual Mason living the values that we teach and encouraging the same in others that makes us the strong organization that we are and the good men that we continue to be. I want to thank you today for the opportunity to serve as your Grand Master and to be associated with men of such strong character. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I didn't wrap them up. I didn't feel like it was necessary to wrap them down, but okay, thank you so much. Okay. All right. Brother Ray? Yeah. It must have been cold there in my shadow. Never have sunlight on your face. You've been content to let me shine. You always walked a step behind. I was the one. With all the glory While you were the one With all the strength Only your face without a name I never once heard you complain you to know I know the truth. I would be nothing without you.
ladies, would you recognize Ray and my lady Sally? I know that. Brother Ray, as much as I appreciated that, I was told that that clap was for Sally. <laughs> okay. And Brother Sturgeon, thank you for reminding me to have Sally stand. You know, I, it, I know it was, but it's, it's, it, you know, it's a lot going on up here. <laughs> right Worshipful Grand Secretary, read so much of the minutes of the quarterly communication held December 4th, 2019, as relates to the election of Grand Lodge officers. Right Worshipful Grand Master and Brethren, this being the time prescribed by the Hyman Reason for the annual election of the Grand Lodge officers to serve this Grand Lodge during the ensuing Masonic year, beginning on St. John Day, the Evangelist Day next, the following brethren were duly elected. Brother Thomas Gammon IV, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master. Brother Larry Arthur Durr, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden. Brother Robert Darren Brink, Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, Brother Adam Christopher Hess, Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, and Brother Mark Allen Haynes, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary. Thank you, Brother Grand Secretary. Brother Adam Christopher Hess, you've been elected Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer to serve the Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer elect in front of the altar. Brother Adam Christopher Hess, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, install Brother Adam Christopher Hess. I, Adam Christopher Hess, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this Right Worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor is duly installed beginning this day. I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and excommunication, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. I will take charge of all monies, books, papers, and other property of the Grand Lodge entrusted to my care, and deliver them to my successor when duly qualified to receive them. I will keep a true and exact account of all of my receipts and expenditures. 
I will receive all monies paid to me on account of the Grand Lodge, giving my receipt, therefore, and pay out the same, only on orders lawfully drawn. To all of which I swear, without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mine in me whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same, binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having the penalties of all my former obligations inflicted upon me at one and the same time, if that were possible. So help me God, and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful grand treasurer's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible, and it rocks. I now invest you with the collar to which is pendant the jewel of your office, the cross keys tied with the ribbon. Also with the apron, which is embroidered, a representation of the same jewel. I'll conduct you to your station. the Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Southern State Judges, Governor Adam Christopher Hess, turning into the elected at his call, the Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the Nation and of the Fraternity of Free and Accepted Masons of Pennsylvania and Masonic Jurisdiction, thereof to belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Southern State Judges, Brother Robert Darren Brink, you've been elected Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am Right Worshipful Grand Master. Hmm? Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden elect to the front of the altar. Brother Robert Darren Brink, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square and compasses.
Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, install Brother Robert Darren Brink. Say I pronounce your name in full and recite your obligation. I, Robert Darren Brink, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor is duly installed, beginning this day. <coughs> I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications of the Grand Lodge, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. In the absence of the right worshipful senior Grand Warden, I will take his station and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. In the absence of the right worshipful Deputy Grand Master, and the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, I will take the station of the Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. In the absence of the Right Worshipful Grand Master, the Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, and the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, I will take the station of the Right Worshipful Grand Master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. <coughs> I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usages, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity and the Constitution, Rules, Regulations, and Edicts of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, I will assist the Right Worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. To all of which I swear, without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind in me whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same, binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having the penalties of all my former obligations inflicted upon me at one and the same time, if that were possible. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful junior grand warden's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. I invest you with the collar to which is pendant the jewel of your office, the plum. Also with the apron upon which is embroidered a representation of the same jewel. present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, which you have sworn to assist the Right Worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. Present you with your calm. It is an emblem of your authority. When the Lodge is at labor, you will place it in a horizontal position upon your pedestal with the base toward the east. When called off from labor, you will place it in a perpendicular position. The Lodge is then in your charge. You may permit brethren to retire but allow no one to enter. I will now escort you to your station. Brother Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Brother, take notice that Brother Robert Darren Brink, having been duly elected and installed Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden of the Right Worshipful Grand Lodge of the most ancient and honorable fraternity of three accepted masons of Pennsylvania and the Masonic jurisdiction there of the belonging, is hereby proclaimed as such. Brother, take notice. Brother Robert Darren Brink, having been duly elected 
Brother Larry Arthur Durr, you have been elected Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden-elect in front of the altar. Brother Larry Arthur Durr, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, install Brother Larry Arthur Durr. Say I, pronounce your name in full, and recite your obligation. I, Larry Arthur Durr, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful senior Grand Warden of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year, and until my successor is duly installed, beginning this day. I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. In the absence of the right worshipful deputy grand master, I will take his station and perform the duties thereof <coughs> to the best of my ability. In the absence of the right worshipful grand master and the right worshipful deputy grand master, I will take the station of the right worshipful grand master and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usages customs and landmarks of the fraternity and the constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, I will assist the right worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced to all which I swear without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind in me whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same binding myself under no less a penalty than that of having the penalties of all my former obligations inflicted upon me at one and the same time, if that were possible. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful senior Grand Warden's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. I invest you with the collar, to which is pendant the jewel of your office, the level. Also with the apron, upon which is embroidered a representation of the same jewel.
I present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, which you have sworn to assist the right worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. Also with a gavel, with which you will assist the Grand Master in preserving order. I present you with your column. It is the emblem of your authority. When the Grand Lodge is at labor, you will place it upon your pedestal in a perpendicular position. When called off from labor, you will place it in a horizontal position with the base toward the south. I will now conduct you to your station. Brother Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, you've been elected Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master to serve this Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Marshal, Mar Master elect in front Whatever. of the altar. Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Right Worshipful Deputy Grand Master, Install Brother Jeffrey Mark Wonderling. Say I, pronounce your name in full, and recite your obligation. I, Jeffrey Mark Wonderling, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and this right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful Deputy Grand Master for the present Masonic year 
and until my successor is duly installed beginning this day. I will attend the annual grand, quarterly, special, and extra communications, take my station therein, and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. In the absence of the right worshipful Grand Master, I will take his station and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability. I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usages, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity, and the Constitution, rules, regulations, and edicts of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, I will assist the right worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. To all of which I swear, without any equivocation, mental reservation, or self-evasion of mind in me whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same. So help me God, and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful Deputy Grand Master's oath and obligation. You will kiss the Holy Bible and arise. I now invest you with the collar to which is pendant the jewel of your office. Also with the apron upon which is embroidered a representation of the same jewel. might be a little too big. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I present you with a copy of the Hyman Reason, the Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania which you have sworn to assist the right worshipful Grand Master in seeing duly enforced. I will now conduct you to your station. For the Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation.
brethren, ladies and guests, I, I'm at something of a quandary. The uh, Hyman reason indicates that the uh, new Grand Master is not installed till oh, maybe 40, 50 minutes from now. And uh, you know, I, the, I have two, two things that I could do. I could uh, issue a dispensation to allow that to happen early, or if you prefer, I could regale you with a medley, medley, yeah, medley of uh, some of my uh, better talks that I've done over the last two. <laughs> Dis dispensation seems to be the, the way to go here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Brother Thomas Gammon IV, you've been elected Right Worshipful Grand Master to serve the Grand Lodge for the present Masonic year and until your successor is duly installed beginning this day. Are you prepared to take upon yourself the necessary obligation? I am Right Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the Right Worshipful Grand Master elect in front of the altar. Brother Thomas Scammon IV, remove your Masonic clothing, kneel upon both knees in front of the altar, and lay both hands upon the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Say your name and recite your obligation. I, Thomas Gammon IV, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God and His right worshipful Grand Lodge, do hereby, herein, and hereon, most solemnly, sincerely, and truly, promise, declare, and swear that I will serve as right worshipful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania for the present Masonic year and until my successor has been duly installed, beginning this day. I will attend the annual Grand quarterly, special, and extra communications, take my station therein and perform the duties thereof to the best of my ability, unless prevented by sickness or some other unavoidable occurrence. I will keep, support, maintain, and abide by all the ancient usage, customs, and landmarks of the fraternity, the constitution, rules, regulations, and edicts of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. I will see duly enforced. To all of which I swear, without equivocation, mental reservation or self-evasion of mind and me, whatever, but with a firm and steadfast resolution to keep and perform the same. So help me God and keep me steadfast in this, my right worshipful Grand Master's oath and obligation. We'll kiss the Holy Bible and arise. now invest you with your collar, pendant to which is the jewel of your office. Also with your apron. Thank you. 
do this. This isn't the way. There we go. That's, that's going to take that 40 minutes that I was talking about. There we go. I present you a copy of the Hyman Reason. The Constitution of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, to which you have sworn to enforce. Also, I invest you with your gavel. It is a symbol of your authority. One rap demands silence. Two raps calls up the Grand Lodge officers. Three raps calls up the Grand Lodge. And one rap seats them. That does me a favor. Also, with your hat. You will wear it during all sessions of the Grand Lodge, except for the purpose of prayers, administering obligations, and other times when it is necessary for removal. I will now conduct you to your station. <laughs> the Grand Marshal, make the usual proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brother Grand Marshal, conduct the right worshipful Grand Master along with Brother A. Preston Van Dersen, Grand Chaplain and Lady Cheryl to the altar.
most holy and omnipotent God, we ask your blessing upon these, your servants, right worshipful Grandmaster Thomas Gammon IV and Lady Cheryl, who have graciously accepted your path for them and their life by humbly accepting this position of great leadership. May you watch over them on their journey. And when the trails are difficult, may they know there are many who are here for them to lighten any burden. It is in grateful gratitude that we thank them for their faithfulness and their diligence to our fraternity. And on this special day, we remember those who have directed their pathway here, mentors and friends and family, those who may be smiling from your heavenly court, saying, well done, dear ones. We ask now your guidance, strength, and wisdom as they embark on this incredible journey, and may they do so by putting their trust in you. And as they stand here together, may the love that brought them to this place continue to bond them that they may always have each other to comfort and hold on to. Watch over their family as they too are part of what gives them strength. And may we all keep them now in our prayers as we ask our blessings upon them and pledge them our support. These things we ask in your holy name. Amen. Lord of <laughs> troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so I can stand stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. There is no life, no life without its hunger. Each precious heart beats so imperfectly. And when I sit and wait here in the silence, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on my me up to more than I can be. 
Brother Grand Marshal, present Lady Sally to the east so she may present Right Worshipful Past Grand Master S. Eugene Herrick with his Past Grand Master's jewel, apron, and lapel pin. know what it's like, Sally. Yeah, your arms aren't long enough. Brother S. Eugene Hare, Right Worshipful Past Grandmaster, I would like to present you with your Past Grandmaster's commission. Thank you. You may have that. Thank you. Oh. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, read the summary of the resolution for the creation of the Pennsylvania Franklin Medal. Right Worshipful Grand Master, at the March 7th, 1979 quarterly communication, 
and under the direction of Right Worshipful Grandmaster Walter P. Wells, the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania adopted a resolution for the creation of the Pennsylvania Franklin Medal to honor Brother Benjamin Franklin, who served this Grand Lodge as Right Worshipful Grandmaster in 1734 and 1749. The purpose of the medal is to honor other distinguished members of the craft who have rendered outstanding service to Freemasonry in general or to this Grand Lodge in particular. The intended recipients are chosen by the Right Worshipful Grandmaster, Right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster, Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, and Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden. Now therefore, be it resolved on this 27th day of December, 2019 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, for the Thomas Gammon IV, Right Worshipful Grandmaster has awarded the Pennsylvania Franklin Medal to a brother who has distinguished himself by providing outstanding service to the craft in general, as well as to his profession and his community in particular. Attest Brother Mark A. Haynes, Right Worshipful Grand Secretary. Brother Grand Marshal, present our recipient to the East. My appointments for the following positions for the year 2020 are as follows. Will the new District Deputy Grandmasters please stand and be recognized as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grandmaster. Brother Jeffrey R. Miller, Lodge Number 260, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 3rd Masonic District. Brother Scott A. Straudinger, Lodge Number 469, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 9th Masonic District. Brother Kevin J. Kuna, Lodge number 291, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 13th Masonic District. Brother Benjamin A. Binion, Lodge number 542, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 14th Masonic District. Brother David R. McGuigan, Lodge number 343, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 16th Masonic District. Brother Charles L. Davis, Lodge number 408, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 25th Masonic District. Brother J. A. McGuire, Lodge number 447, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 29th Masonic District, and Brother Jeffrey J. Borowski, Lodge number 499, District Deputy Grandmaster of the 59th Masonic District. Please receive them. I would like to recognize the District Deputy Grandmasters who have completed their service for the Grand Lodge. Please stand and be recognized as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right Worshipful Grandmaster, Brother John D. Cook, Lodge Number 143, the 3rd Masonic District. Brother George W. Young, Lodge Number 284 of the 9th Masonic District. Brother James B. Henkelman, Lodge Number 345 of the 13th Masonic District. Brother Wendell R. Hunt, Lodge Number 542 of the 14th Masonic District. Brother Stephen M. Wirtz, Lodge Number 299 of the 16th Masonic District. Brother R. Joseph Haberlin, Jr., Lodge Number 424 of the 25th Masonic District. Brother David L. Moore, Lodge Number 237 of the 29th Masonic District. And Brother Robert D. Brink, Lodge Number 469 of Masonic District 9 and at large. My brethren, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your service to the Grand Lodge. 
you have served well. Thank you. My appointments for the following positions for the year 2020 are as follows. Take your places as your name is announced by the Grand Secretary. Right, Worshipful Grand Master. Brother Timothy L. Schumar, Lodge number 346, Senior Grand Deacon. Brother Christopher R. Foy, Lodge number 595, Junior Grand Deacon. Brother William P. Sachs, Lodge number 310, Grand Steward. Brother Kenneth R. Good, Lodge number 75, Good Grand Steward. Good Brother John A. Fair, Lodge number 521, Grand Marshal. Brother Jeffrey S. Moyer, Lodge number 43, Assistant Grand Marshal. Brother Thomas Gammon V, Lodge number 595, Grand Sword Bearer. Brother William J. Giuseppe, Lodge number 383, Grand Persimmon. Brother Edward J. Stum, Lodge number 309, Grand Tyler. And Brother Brian K. Fritz, Lodge number 284, Assistant Grand Tyler. Ladies, brethren, and guests, good morning. <laughs> Brother Gene, Lady Sally, congratulations on the job well done. Cheryl and I enjoyed traveling and working with you over the last six years. We will look back on these times with fond memories. We want to wish you both the very best in your future endeavors. I am honored and humbled to stand before you as the Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. There have only been 122 men who have held this station in the 289 years of the Grand Lodge's existence, and I am grateful for the trust that has been placed in me. Please be assured that I embrace the responsibility of this office and will work diligently to advance the best interests of our fraternity. When I first entered the craft, as a member of Perkium and Lodge, number 595, in Red Hill, Pennsylvania. I had no idea that a Grand Lodge or even a Grand Master existed. My whole Masonic world consisted of my small country lodge and the great men who became my brothers. They instilled in me a love for our fraternity and the values and principles upon which it was founded so long ago and which remain the lifeblood of our organization today. It wasn't be until I became more involved and met more of our brothers across the Commonwealth that I came to understand the role of the Grand Lodge and the Grand Master. My Masonic journey has enriched my life in so many ways, and I cherish the honor to serve you and our beloved fraternity as Grand Master. Perhaps now, more than ever, the world needs our fraternity and the timeless principles of love and tolerance that we have espoused for hundreds of years. While the bonds we share may seem to some but a quaint reminder of days long gone, we must always seek the high road in our discourse and in our action. While our Masonic values may be overlooked by some in the hustle and bustle of today's fast-paced society, we must be confident that our way of life has lasting value and the light we bear will help bring peace and happiness 
to our homes and communities. Indeed, as Freemasons, we set a high standard for ourselves. Freemasonry is more than a fraternity. It is a way of life. Right Worshipful Past Grand Master William Carpenter described our beloved fraternity this way. Freemasonry is kindness in the home, honesty in business, courtesy in society, pity and concern, concern for the unfortunate, resistance of the wicked, help for the weak, trust in the strong, forgiveness for the penitent, love for one another, and above all, reverence and love for God. Freemasonry is not for everyone, and we should not try to be all things to all people. We should be mindful of the words of one of our predecessors, who in 1915 wrote, the desire for numbers may easily result in permanent injury to our fraternity. If we want our beloved fraternity to flourish for perpetuity, we must emphasize quality over quantity regarding membership. Or as Brother Thomas Jackson, Right Worshipful Past Grand Secretary put it, we do not need more Masons, we do not need more members, we need more Freemasons. Over the last year, we have adopted and implemented the Not Just a Man, a Mason Awareness Campaign to increase understanding of who we are, what we believe, and what we do. We will use this campaign and increase presence on social media, the Pennsylvania Freemason, and other channels to get the word out about the work Pennsylvania Freemasons do every day to improve our communities. Increased awareness, especially when combined with selective invitation, will certainly lead to inquiries from persons with whom our tenants and actions resonate. It is our job to make sure our institution, from turret to foundation stone, lives up to its billing. Therefore, my programs share a common theme, encourage Pennsylvania Freemasons to find value in and to be proud of their Masonic membership through an emphasis on time-tested Masonic principles and values. In our Blue Lodges, we will encourage our officers and members to participate in the ritual and attain ritual proficiency. Our ritual cements our bonds to each other and to past and future generations of Freemasons. To do this, we will work with the schools of instruction on proficiency requirements, continue district, region, and statewide ritual competitions, and recognize those among us who demonstrate leadership in the ritual through their excellent work or mentorship of others. Ingrained in our ritual and symbolism is the fundamental concept that the reward of our fraternity is achieved only through our labors to service to God and humanity. One of the most inspiring and valuable aspects of our brotherhood is the beauty of our fraternal bonds. Many of those begin and grow while a mentor and his mentee spend quality time learning the work, talking about life, their family, their jobs, their ambitions, and their dreams. These are friendships and bonds that are forged for the rest of our lives. For this reason, we will continue to encourage lodges to adopt mentor programs and make sure good tools are conveniently accessible to them for this purpose. Of course, at the very heart of Freemasonry is the grassroots good works that our lodges and members do in their communities, through which we are rewarded with a pro pro profound perspective of our purpose. In this regard, we will encourage our lodges to continue looking out for their members and their families using their ominous funds and enhanced resources that will be available through our outreach program. Similarly, we will encourage lodges to stay in touch and be ready to assist the widows and dependents of our deceased brothers. We will also be reinstituting a random act of kindness program to encourage our members to go the extra mile to lend a hand to their neighbor and to provide examples for others to follow. Since the term of Brother Stephen Gardner, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master, we have conducted the Help for the Heroes program, raising more than $1 million to assist our servicemen and women. 
this wonderful program will continue and will be expanded to serve the needs of our veterans. Due to popular demand, the leadership training programs will also continue. These programs are designed to help cultivate leadership skills in our professional careers, but can be applied to our work as volunteers within our lodges and other organizations. We will also formalize programs and encourage support for the first responders who serve our communities. My brothers, first responders work tirelessly on the front lines of dangerous and traumatic events, often putting their own lives at risk to save others. These dedicated professionals deserve appreciation for their sacrifices every day, but I am asking Pennsylvania Masons to celebrate their dedication, courage, and sacrifice during the month of October. As many of you know, but as last several years, we have revamped our membership software system from the ground up. Though still being refined, our new platform provides opportunities to improve and enhance the membership experience and we will begin to test and roll out such features. Although I will not mandate a statewide one-day class, if a lodge or district would like to organize a class, I will provide the appropriate dispensation. I do, however, challenge each Mason to replace himself by introducing a friend to our brotherhood. Thanks to Brother Thomas K. Sturgeon, right worshipful past Grandmaster, since 2009, we have had the ability to invite good men to be, me to be members. So let's welcome men we feel would make ideal brethren to join the world's greatest fraternity. To launch this effort today, I will be presenting a signed petition to my lodge. The generous support we have received from Pennsylvania Masons and their loved ones over the years have allowed us to establish our Masonic villages, Masonic Library and Museum, Pennsylvania Youth Foundation, Masonic Charities Fund, and Masonic Blood and Organ Donor Program. These are truly exciting times for our charities. Like our Blue Lodges, our charities put into action our Masonic values every day. In the coming months, you will be hearing more about the amazing work they do. Our Masonic villages continue to provide substantial fraternal care and assistance to seniors without the resources to pay for their care. To our youth in our Masonic Children's Home, through home assistance and hospice services, and so many other ways. In 2018, our Masonic Villages provided over $46.8 million in fraternal care as part of its continued mission of love. We will continue to maintain and preserve our wonderful and historic Masonic Temple, Library, and Museum and showcase our valuable collection of art, literature, and artifacts. We will enhance our public and membership-based educational programs, as well as our efforts to sustain monuments of Masonic significance around the Commonwealth. Through our Youth Foundation, we will continue to support our Masonic youth, expand our youth-oriented educational initiatives focused on youth safety, and our generous scholarship programs to develop the leaders of tomorrow. Our Masonic Charities Fund will continue to assist those victimized by natural disasters around the world, support the George Washington National Memorial and the Masonic Service Association and other needs that may come to our attention. The Masonic Blood and Organ Donor Program will continue its grassroots effort through the selfless labor of many volunteers who facilitate blood donations and encourage organ donor participation. Your Grand Lodge has prospered so, for so long by being prudent stewards of the generous financial support supplied by our members and their loved ones. Working with our Grand Treasurer, we will continue to be fiscally responsible as we pursue our charitable and fraternal activities here in our Commonwealth. There is much to be done and I am optimistic that we can achieve success together. I believe in this great fraternity and the men who I call my brothers. The legacy given to us by the generation of brethren who came before us is a great responsibility. We must do everything in our power to ensure that when every current Mason is gone from this earth, 
the Masonic ideals and values we hold so dearly and that society needs so desperately will live on through future generations. Our world needs Freemasonry, and it is our charge to ensure it lives on to benefit the world and serve the craft for eternity. For the next two years, I ask you to join me in protecting our history to serve our future. I truly believe the best years for our fraternity are still to come. Thank you. God bless our great fraternity and the United States of America. Thank you. Brethren, at this time, your Grand Lodge will be pleased to receive any contributions from members, lodges, or Masonic districts. All donations will be presented at the Secretary's desk. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the officers and members of Southampton Radiant Star Lodge number 806, I present you this check for $1,000 for the Masonic's Children Home at Elizabethtown, also in your honor and thanking you for coming to our 50th anniversary. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, you get them. Yeah, yeah. That's where the money goes. <laughs> Right, Worshipful Grand Master, it is my privilege on behalf of the 7th Masonic District to present you this check for your Masonic Library. It was earned by the Right Worshipful Grand Secretary who climbed into a dunk tank this summer. So thank you very much. <laughs> and he got out? <laughs> thank you, my out. God. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> let me out. Thank you. Thank you. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of Chandler Lodge, number 227, in Reading, Pennsylvania, I present this donation of $10,000 to Grand Lodge to be used as you see best fit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of Mountain Lodge number 281, my home lodge, we present you a check for $281 to the museum. I'm just making an anonymous donation right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of the Lavelle Bally Lodge number 232, I have a $250 check for the children's home. Right Worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of Richard Vaux Ivanhoe Lodge number 384, I have a number of checks to present you that are in my apron case outside of this room. But I will be giving them to the Grand Secretary after the meeting. They're in the amount for various Masonic charities in the amount of $12,000. Thank you. Brother Grand Secretary, could you put an aid with him just so we make sure we get the checks? We'll send Mike McCabe. We'll send Mike McCabe. Worshipful Grandmaster, Worshipful Grandmaster, I want to make a donation on behalf of the Shriners, which uh, are a great organization and always helping children around the world. So thank you. Again, thank you so much. Thank you.
Right worshipful grandmaster. I have a hundred bucks here. I just wanted to give you a hug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right worshipful grandmaster. Congratulations. It's very good. Very good to be up here. Uh, on behalf of the 5th Masonic District, District School of Instruction, I'd like to present you with a check of $500, and it's somewhere in this room. <laughs> so whenever we get we'll, it. We'll start searching. We'll, we'll find it. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Huh? Yeah, when you hand your raise. Thank you one and all for the generous donations. You know, at this point, we have a special presentation. And I'm hesitating for a second because I kind of lied a little bit when we had to put it in the book. It's very tough to present something to somebody when they, uh, they make out the book and you don't want them to know. So I had a fib, just a little bit to get a line put in there so I didn't forget. Brother Deputy Grandmaster, will you assist me? Brother Grand Secretary. I'm ready to go. Approach the east. <laughs> right where we're master. Approach. <laughs> I know he doesn't. <laughs> you know that. A little background on this. Everybody knows what Brother Mark does for Pennsylvania Freemasons. We couldn't exist without him. But last year, we were in Rapid City, South Dakota. Why in February, I don't know, but that's where we were. Brother Mark happened to be the conference secretary, and he did such a yeoman job with that. The right worshipful Grand Lodge officers chipped in and purchased a gift for you to say thank you for not only what you do in Pennsylvania Freemasonry, but we did it for the conference. And you're welcome. <laughs> open it? Yes, you may. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Uh, I have to admit, I always am a little afraid to open a gift from Brother Wonderling. <laughs> so, and, and I think he has the Grand Master on his side. <laughs> Just like at Christmas. Just like at Christmas. Yep, just like at Christmas. <laughs> you know, he's been blamed for wrapping it that way. Yeah, probably Gladys. Gladys, Gladys yeah. You get it? <laughs> Cheryl had to wrap this. Cheryl did. Yeah. Very nice. And my apron, please. Thank you. Get in between us. Here, watch your foot there, buddy, because. Thank you. You're welcome. No speech. No speech. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> brother. You're welcome. The other side of the chair. Okay. Okay. Right Worshipful Past Grand Master Herrick. Please approach these. 
for those of you that don't know, Grandmaster Herrick also served as the chairman of the Masonic Village's board of directors. Long title, I can't get there. But so we thought we had a little presentation for you to remember your days there. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, you have a report at this time. Sure. It pleases me to report that the, the Treasury has collected $25,681 today. Thank you. Thank you. Right Worshipful Grand Secretary, have you any further business? Right Worshipful Grand Master, I have no further business. Brother, Brother Robert J. Bateman, Right Worshipful Past Grand Master, have you anything to offer for the good of Freemasonry in general? or this Grand Lodge in particular? I do, but I'm not going to say anything. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> right, Worshipful Grand Master. Brethren, as you all know, I'm not one to play tricks or any games here when I get up to speak. Hmm. However, since we had some extra time here earlier, I had mentioned to you that maybe it'd be a good idea that I could go a little longer on my speech here. <coughs> and the Grand Master said, I got something very wise to say to you. And he said, I said, what's that, Grand Master? He said, brief and point it. And you've passed the brief point. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and brethren, I just want you to know there's 27 pages here of nice comments I was going to make for him. <laughs> Key word is, was. <laughs> right, Worshipful Grandmaster, thank you for the privilege to speak on behalf of these distinguished gentlemen up here in the East. I would like, we would like to congratulate Brother S. Eugene Harrod and Lady Sal, Sally as the newest baby pass Grandmaster and now the first lady of the new baby grand past master. And Jean, we also would like, and I like to say Jean now because I can get away with it. Thank you for all that you have done for, grand, uh, for this uh, tremendous fraternity in general and, free, and uh, the Pennsylvania Grand Lodge in particular. We'd also like to thank the elected RWs as they now take their new stations in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania and also thank their ladies for their support. And believe me, brethren, I threw that in there just to make sure I didn't know anybody address. Because <laughs> after a while, you have to go into the bling category. Grandmaster, we would also like to congratulate you on your installation as our 123rd Right Worshipful Grandmaster and Lady Cheryl as our First Lady. We would also like to wish your family the very best you. as you all embark on your greatest Masonic journey there is in Pennsylvania Freemasonry. Grandmaster, you made a comment earlier in your talk about pictures. And there are 122 pictures of past Grandmasters over there on the, in the hallways of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Now, they also say a picture is worth a thousand words. So, Grandmaster, if you put it together, you have 122,000 words on those walls. And I would encourage you to take a walk over there before you go home and look at these pictures because these are the men whose programs and ideas have been woven into the fabric of Pennsylvania Freemasonry. And I ask you to go a little bit further back to the Benjamin Franklin Room. And ladies, if you're not aware of the Benjamin Franklin Room, there are two past Grand Masters on the wall outside the Ben Franklin Room, and there's 11 on the walls inside, and they are the living past Masters. And these gentlemen, all the ones who are not here today, and the ones that are here today, will help aid and assist you anytime you ask. And Grand Master, it's now your turn and your time to lay, you, to lay your programs 
and ideas out there for the ladies and the brethren in Pennsylvania. And at the end of your term, those programs and ideals will also be woven into the fabric of Pennsylvania Freemasonry. And all of us here today, all of us up in here in the East, wish you, Lady Cheryl, and your family the very best in these next two years. And may God bless you as our new Grand Master and Lady Cheryl as our new First Lady as you journey for the next two years in Pennsylvania Freemasonry. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. See, the Grand Secretary is always talk, already telling me, well, I forgot. Brother Gregor Gregory Scott, most forceful Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of New, Zer New Jersey, please respond for the distinguished guest. My worshipful Grand Master, my worshipful past Grand Masters, distinguished guests, my brothers all, friends and family of free masonry, especially our lovely ladies, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is my honor, privilege, and pleasure to be with you here today. How good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity, especially on this most auspicious occasion, the annual communication of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania here in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. How appropriate is that? My worshipful Grand Master, on behalf of myself and all the visiting dignitaries and guests, we would like to thank you in the grand jurisdiction of Pennsylvania for all the courtesies and hospitality that has been extended to us during our stay. We wish you all the best in your upcoming Masonic years and endeavors and know the grand jurisdiction of Pennsylvania is in great hands. As we are now embraced in this beautiful holiday season, may the principles of our great fraternity, faith, hope, and the greatest being that of charity, guide and strengthen us all in our daily trials and tribulations. May the grand architect of the universe shine his light down upon us and unite us under the tenets of our fraternity, that of brotherly love, relief, and truth. I would like to take this opportunity to wish us all a very happy, healthy, and a prosperous new year. God bless us all, God bless Freemasonry, and God bless this United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. I really do. Thanks for being here. Right, Worshipful Grand Secretary, have you anything to offer for the good of Freemasonry in general, or this Grand Lodge in particular? Right, Worshipful Grand Master. First, I'd like to address past Grand Master, S. Eugene Harrett, and I'd like to uh, congratulate you on your completion of a successful two years. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, I know we've had some, some uh, opportunities and challenges, but we, we met them head on, and uh, it was a pleasure to be able to work with you and the rest of the Grand Lodge team. And Lady Karen and I would like to thank you and Lady Sally for including us in our, in our travels, and we've enjoyed the time we spent together. 
Right, Worshipful Grand Master, I would first like to congratulate the Grand Lodge officers on a very fine installation today, and I'd like to especially congratulate you. We go back a few years. We, we've been doing this, this gig for quite a few years. We started yes. as deputies together, and uh, we're continuing our travels. And uh, Lady Karen and I look forward to continuing those travels with uh, you and Lady Cheryl, and, uh, and I know you have a very aggressive agenda, and we're going to be very successful, I'm sure. And to everybody assembled here, I wish everybody a very happy and prosperous new year. Thank you, Grand Master. Thank you. Right Worshipful Grand Treasurer, have you anything to offer? Thank you, Right Worshipful Grand Master. Um, first, I would like to say thank you to past Right Worshipful Grand Master Herrett for the opportunity to serve the fraternity in the capacity over the last two years. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve. Grand Master, congratulate you on a uh, wonderful annual here today, and thank you to the brethren. I appreciate the opportunity to serve this fraternity in the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right Worshipful Junior Grand Warden, have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful Grand Master, I'm the new guy here, but <coughs> following the Masonic Protocol as I understand it, I'd like to thank my wife and best friend Allison for her support. Without that, I would not be able to make this commitment. I'd like to thank you personally for the honor you've bestowed upon me and the trust you've placed in me. I'd like to thank all the past Grand Masters, specifically uh, Brother Gene and Sally. Good luck as you go forward. Uh, I, I hope you've figured out what you're going to do with your spare time. <laughs> uh, thank you all. Thank you, brethren, for your support. Thank you to my family. There's a whole bunch of them over there and my friends and uh, also to all my brothers from Saucon Lodge. Thank, thank you. you. Right Worshipful Senior Grand Warden, have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful Grand Master, thank you. Uh, first of all, it just seems like yesterday I was the new guy on the block, and now Brother Brink happens to be the new guy on the block. But, and second, I'd like to congratulate Brother Gene for a very successful two years and allow me and permitting me to serve him and this Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania. Congratulations to you as being installed as the Right Worshipful Grand Master. I look forward to your two years and also to all the other Right Worshipfuls who were installed. It is quite a privilege to be able to serve this great lodge, and it's also just wonderful to see everybody here today to see your installation. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> right Worshipful Deputy Grandmaster, have you anything to offer? Right Worshipful Grandmaster, first of all, I would like to congratulate Brother Gene and Lady Sally for the eight-year commitment through those eight years and all the service you've placed in place and upon you and your support. I really appreciate it. I think that demonstrates over the years that you're willing to do that. Thank you very much. I would like to congratulate you, Grandmaster. Uh, it's going to be a fun ride. I can't wait. Uh, and with all the, uh, the other officers, I want to thank all the officers that have served for, for the, uh, and the new appointments that will be here today. And I just would like to just say one thing that's uh, pretty important. I would like to introduce my family. I'm not going to introduce them, but I want to tell you that there's nine people over there, and five of them have belonged to a Masonic youth group. Yes, I can see. Please five stand. Five of them have belonged to a Masonic youth group, and they're so important to what we do. It's only three uh, my up. My wife is a rainbow girl. She forgot. <laughs> Julia was a crystal heart. There you go. So it's very important to our family, and it's very important to Pennsylvania Freemasonry. And don't forget our youth group. Please support them. Thank you, Grand Master, and thank you for everything. Thank you. Just closing remarks. I would like to first have my family stand. They, they are so important to me. I couldn't do it without them. Give away you too. Thank you. Now, I have another family here today that I would like to stand to. All my firefighters. You know, I've been fire chief for probably since 1984. These guys I laughed with, cried with, consoled, 
They've consoled me on a couple of occasions. Please, Laura Frederick's Bar Company. I'd like to wish everybody a happy and safe New Year's. We hope to see you all next year. And we are about to close. A special Master Masons only meeting of Perky Elman Lodge, number 595, will be held at 1.30 p.m., but I think we're going to probably move that up, in Corinthian Hall in the Masonic Temple to receive the right worshipful Grand Master. The June quarterly communication of the Grand Lodge will be held in, on Saturday, June 6, 2020, at 10 o'clock a.m. at the Bayfront Convention Center, Erie, Pennsylvania. I would like to extend thanks to Brother Robert F. Trimble, Past Master, New London Lodge, number 545. Brother Jeffrey P. Lees, member, Thompson Lodge, number 340, Grand Lodge Organist. And Brother Raymond E. Foose, member of Newtown Lodge, number 427, soloist for your presentation. Thank you. Brother James A. Yoder, Grand Chaplain, give the closing prayer. Us all regular Freemasons, may we practice out of the Grand Lodge those principles of religion and morality that we are taught within it. We have a more on social justice, the menace in the bonds of peace and fraternal love, and procure thy gracious favor, O blessed Lord God, who liveth and reigneth in indescribable glory and happiness forever and ever. Amen. So mo to be. declare this annual grand communication of the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania closed. The brethren and guests will stand fast until the Grand Lodge officers have retired. Brother Grand Marshal, form the recessional. Master, Me Master Mason's meeting with Perky Lodge, number 595, at 1245. Any Master Mason is invited.
Grand Chaplains. Aids to the Grand Master. District Deputy Grandmasters. District Deputy Grandmasters. Distinguished guests of the Right Horseful Grandmaster. Right Worshipful Past Grandmasters. Right Horseful Grand Secretary, Right Horseful Grand Treasurer. Right Horseful Junior Grand Warden, Right Horseful Senior Grand Warden.
Wright Horsfold Deputy Grandmaster. Grand Lodge Party, open order, inward, face. The right, worshipful Grandmaster. 